Hi, Pete Scargill here. What we're going to be talking about briefly today is Tasmoda. I'm going to show you um, the latest links to Tasmoda itself, to the flashing utility called Tasmatizer, and to the device manager called TDM, or Tasmoda Device Manager. Hopefully this will tie it all together for you and although there's far too much for me to explain here the links you're going to see here and the images I'm going to show you will, will try hopefully give you some kind of idea of how this all fits together. So firstly we have Tasmoda, an open source alternative firmware for ESP8266 based devices which is the vast majority of home control IoT type devices right now. Documentation. Here we are. Documentation. How to control Tasmoda, for example. Commands. Modules and components. This one site puts everything together. Tasmoda.github.io slash docs. Over on the right, you see Tasmatizer itself. In this case, an exe file for Windows 10, which will let you put this firmware onto an ESP8266 based board. For example, the IT Sonoff. I'm not actually going to program one of these, but in the past, you used to have to use a bunch of, let's say, Python files. There is now a single Windows EXE program. You can flash a local binary file which you can open up something you've downloaded in this case in users pete.tasmoda.bin or you can choose the latest release file directly from the web or if you're feeling more experimental the latest development file again which you've just pulled directly off the web you don't you don't download anything manually you just press the button and go your only decisions are do you want to back up the original firmware that was on the board before you overwrite it and do you want to start absolutely cleanly with a fresh device they're your only decisions that and which COM port you're going to use to flash the device. So let's assume we've now flashed one of these devices and we have Tasmoda on it. We can control Tasmoda by looking at its web interface or talking to it serially. Or once, once Tasmoda is on the device, we can use something called TDM or Tasmoda Device Manager, which again is available now as an EXE file. What you're looking at here is one of many views uh, available. The first one I will show you here, we're looking at the devices list. These are all the devices in my building here, or all the devices that are currently attached. I'll give you an example, living room lights one and two, which are Sonoff basic devices. I can see the state of them either on or off and see how long they've been turned on. I can look at their health. Here are the devices, the amount of time they've been up, how many times they've been booted, the reason they were last restarted, the signal strength for each device. I can look at the various devices, which version of the Tasmota firmware are they running, and which SDK are they running. So I'm not really interested in that. I just want to know what version they're running because I'm not I'm not going in and programming the devices the hard way. I'm not getting a hold of source files, etc. I'm just downloading the latest Tasmoda and running it. Another way to look at the same uh, thing is let's look at the various devices from a web perspective. Uh, Wi-Fi. What IP address are they? To the right is my gateway. That is my Raspberry Pi, which is running all of these devices. They're, they're all controllable, in my case, by MQTT. So what commands have been set up? 
for the various devices. That's an overview of the, the different devices. Let's have a look at an individual device. Here's the web view of one of the devices called TH10. And here's another one called Living Room Light 1. So in this web interface, all of this is done inside Tazmota Device Manager nowadays. I can turn the device on and off, for example. There you are, Living Room Light 1, turn on, turn off. That's just turned a real device on and off, no doubt to the annoyance of my wife. I can, within that, I can look at the configuration for the device. That's a simple sun off basic. I can mess around with the Wi Fi for that device. I can mess around with the MQTT settings for that device. If I was using Demotics, I could go in and set that up. I can configure timers for a device. This is just within Dasmoda itself, not something external like Node Red. I can enable timers, including sunrise and sunset for my particular location. Sunset's a bit uh, optimistic, five o'clock. It's usually pitch black here in winter uh, in the northeast of England by five o'clock, but there you go. I actually do all of that kind of thing in Node Red, but each to their own. I can configure logging for the device if I want to log information in the device. And I can set up Belkin Wemo or Hugh Bridge emulation for Amazon Echo. In this case, that particular device, I Amazon Echo can control the device by speech. I tend not to rely on that because Amazon Echo unfortunately always insists on an external connection to the outside world and if for any reason your broadband goes down you've got no amazon echo everything you're looking at here otherwise is controlled within the building and without relying on the outside world at all aside from obviously electricity and i suppose if i wanted to i could make that self-reliant as well but there you go so down here we're looking at the console output for each device from Tasmota. TH10 is one device. Another device is Living Room Light 1. And we're looking at the consoles of each one of them. Now why do I have two device consoles down at the bottom of the screen here? Because I've been messing around with uh, colours and I used this to copy the colours from one device to another. So, for example, if I look at the web UE of a device called Dual, Device Dual has a dark blue background. Device TH10 has a black background. If I go to Living Room Light 1, go to its console, look at the web color, copy that into the clipboard. Now I can go to Device TH10, which has different colors. Now device TH10 is the same colour as living room. And of course that's just one trivial example. There are a million settings in here which you can copy from and modify if you like from one device to another. So there you are, we can look at the web interfaces for various devices. We can have an overview of all the devices. And we can do all of this including looking at the console commands for each device and various views of the devices, all within TDM. So basically, you have TDM to control Tasmota devices, to set them up and control them. You have Tasmatize to initially program them. And you have the new doc site, where is all the information. So for example, commands. You see a lot of commands here. They probably don't mean to many of you, they don't mean much. But if we were to have a look at the actual site and have a look at commands, there you are, all documented. Are you controlling this device via MQT or are you controlling it via a web request or in the console in the web UE or over a serial bridge? Pretty much the same thing, um, no matter how you choose to do it. 
there's a command called backlog where you can take up to 30 consecutive commands, put them in a single line and update the device. You might do that when you first start off, you might have that stored somewhere. So for example, if I'm setting up various devices, I might use backlog to set up uh, two SSIDs, passwords, some MQTT, and just put the whole lot into in at one in once into a new device. If we have a look at templates, within the setup of a device are uh, what its GPIOs do because different devices GPIOs do different things. There are templates for this to make life easy for you. So some pretty standard devices here, the Blitzwolf. What its GPIOs do? It has a the Blitzwolf device has a button and a LED and it controls a relay and it has some power control as well and you just set up the template for that device. Armed with the docs file you've pretty much got everything you need and armed with Tasmatage you can program the things in the first place. And then when you've got it all running, the Tasmota Device Manager or TDM helps you control a whole load of devices in one place. And now, and this is new, as well as controlling Wi-Fi devices, you can control some Zigbee devices. Zigbee is an alternative to Wi-Fi. It uses 2.4 gigahertz. It's actually been around a long time, but for some of you it'll be new. I've certainly not done much with Zigbee, but I now have a Wi-Fi to Zigbee gateway and a couple of Zigbee devices to play with. So Tasmora can control devices with Zigbee. So they are, hopefully this will bring you up to speed with the basics of what can be done with Tasmora now. When I say now, we're talking about December 2019. There have been a lot of changes recently, a lot of upgrades. You can control RGB lights directly with Tasmota um, and some displays. But I'll leave you to read the manual. Look at the different kinds of display. A very popular display is the SSD1306 Simple OLED Serial I2C display. If your Tasmota device has the pins brought out, you can use SSD1306 with it using Tasmota. SPI on the ESP8266 uses specific GPIO pins. I2C is done in software on the ESP8266, so you're not quite so tied to GPIO pins. Some ESP8266 based devices can do power monitoring and Tasmota handles that as well. Anyway, enough of this. I must go back to finishing setting up my devices. All the devices have Tasmota 7.1.22, except for my new TH10 device. Now, to give you an indication of how easy that is, there's the console for TH10. I'm just going to type in, no, I'm going to pull up the uh, web interface. And I'm going to choose the development version. Hackbox org, Tasmoda, Tasmoda bin, start the upgrade. You'll notice down the bottom we're on Tasmoda 7.1.2. I'm going to start an upgrade. Now this, it says it may take a few seconds, which is nonsense. It tends to take minutes rather than seconds. So be patient. It will do this in two stages with this particular device. Um, this is a Sonoff Basic. It only has one meg of flash. And so it can't do everything in one go. It has to do a two-stage upgrade. However, this is handled automatically. You don't have to do anything. At some point, what I'll do is I will hit refresh on this. It looks like we're still on Tasmoda 7.1.2. But looking at the device list, if I look at TH10, I'm actually already onto the first part of the two-stage upgrade to 7.1.2.2. Here we are. 
7.1.2.2 couple of button presses and and that's it i didn't really do much work there all of that was handled by tdm all of my devices are now on 7.1.2.2 and that's it so i'm going to leave you to um have a play with Tasmatizer, tdm and tasmoda I'm making assumptions here, of course, that you have some ESP8266 based devices handy. Uh, Sonoff Basics are always a good start for experimenting with. Anyway, there you go.